All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, just a couple of real quick housekeeping items before we get going with everything. Uh, if anybody has any questions during the, the talk, uh, please put it in the chat or the Q&A box, and we'll either try to answer it live or answer it at the end. Um, but we're you know thrilled here today. Uh, we have the, the Imaging and Histology Core, uh, you know, led by Karen Edelblum and Luke Fritzke. Um, and they'll be introducing real quick uh, you know the uh, Syntica team. So Karen, if you want to just take it away from there. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm really excited today, um, not only because intrapital microscopy is one of my first loves, but also there's, you know, there's been a lot of interest on campus in, in doing two-font photon microscopy, um, as well as intrapital. And, you know, as, as somebody who kind of builds an intrapital system from scratch during my postdoc, I know it's very intimidating to be able to put together all the components on top of understanding the microscopy. Um, and so when I came across Antigua's, um um, intravital microscopy system, I was really impressed with the setup and, and kind of the flexibility to really be able to image, you know, a variety of different organs with, and it, it kind of overcomes a lot of those um, obstacles that I think most people face when trying to set up these experiments. So I'm very excited that Dr. Phil and Kim is here, um, as well as uh, Nilfar. I am about to butcher your last name. I'm so sorry, Kaswabi. Did I get it yes, right? Yes, that's it. Yes. yes. Awesome. Um, that they're here from Satika to, to kind of share a little bit more about the system and, and answer any questions um, that anyone has. So thank you so much for presenting today. We're looking forward to hearing more about um, the intravital microscopy system. Hey, thank you. Uh, so uh, as you can introduce, so today I will talk about the real-time intravital microscopy system for in vivo cellular level imaging of various internal organs in a live animal model. So I am Kian Kim from IBIN Technology. Okay, so I guess maybe some of you, uh, can you see the video in the middle? Um, it's not playing. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. There <laughs> okay, somehow the previous video doesn't work here, but uh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's working. So, yeah, about that. Sorry about this glitch. So, intraviral microscopy is a technique that can help you to get a you know, detailed library, several level video in a live animal model. So, compared to the conventional X ray, or CT, or micro CT, or micro MRI, you can distinguish individual cells inside the living you know animal and they see how they move in the uh, real in vivo micro environment as shown in this video in the middle so to begin to give you some idea you know uh, what it can what kind of a video and what kind of data we can obtain by using the internal microscopy i would like to start with the uh, you know many example of data obtained from the live animal in vivo by using the intravital microscopy technology. So this is the, uh, the our, you know, one of the uh, device for the stabilized lung imaging in an anesthetized mouse model. So on your left side, so this mouse is basically intubated and then connected to the ventilator. And then we open up the thoracic cavity and then expose the lung. And then as you as you may imagine, the lung is, you know, continuously expand and shrinks, you know, to breathe air. So for microscopic scale imaging, we need to stabilize the motion of the lung and miss the part of the lung to pour, uh, during the intravital imaging. So this device, what this device can do is it can, you know, suck out the air from this chamber through this uh, small hole in here. So suck the air through this suction tube. And by doing that, we can build up the negative pressure inside it and then stabilize, you know, just the, you know, restrict the motion of the lung against this cover glass. Only part of the lung is you know, restricted, so mouse can be alive during this uh, imaging. On the left hand side, on the right hand side, you can see the video uh, for 10 minutes. So in this particular example, uh, actually this work. Oops. Yeah, this work has been published in the uh, European National Journal in 2019. 
So in this example, uh, what we did was we inject the FIPC dextran, the green process, uh, green profile, uh, intravenously. So it can label the blood plasma. So we can image the blood flow in the lung. And at the same time, we label the intravascular neutrophil by injecting antibody conjugate. Uh, more specifically, anti -Li6, uh, LI6G antibody conjugated with the uh, uh, 648. So again, by inject intravenously injecting this uh, antibody conjugate, we can, you know, relatively easily and then very clearly label the intravascular neutrophil inside. And then, as you can see in this video, uh, this neutrophil. Actually, this is the lung of a sepsis mouse model. You can see this neutrophil moves very actively inside the blood vessel, and suddenly they, you know, make a small cluster here. And then, by doing it, it completely blocks this arterial here, and then disturb the uh, blood circulation in the lung. So this is one of the uh, very good data to show the what can you image. Uh, inside the mouse model. So you can see the movement of the cell in real time, in vivo. And then you can also see how they, you know, move around it and the, how they, you know, interact with each other. In this case, they come together and they make a uh, cluster. And then eventually it block the uh, blood vessel and then, you know, uh, disturb, you know, stop the blood circulation in, cap in the capillary level. Okay, so this is another example. So in this example, uh, what we imaged is the lymph node. So more specifically, popular lymph node at the behind the knee here. So we make a small incision on the skin, expose the lymph node, and they keep the temperature to be uh, stable by using additional heater here. And then, and then we image, uh, we obtained this uh, two-hour time lapse imaging of T cell and B cell in the high end cellular venue uh, of the lymph node. So in this case, actually, we use the T cell that express uh, TD tomato, uh, no, no, DSL, the red process protein. And then the B cell actually express GFP, the green process protein. Uh, and then in blue, what you are looking at in blue is a pyroblastic reticular cell. It's another type of a stoma cell inside the lymph node. And then this FRC was labeled by, uh, again, antibody conjugate. This FRC express uh, uh, ELTI7, that's a very specific marker for this type of cell. So what it did was we prefer anti ELTI7 antibody and then again conjugate with the uh, uh, PROFO, Alexa uh, PRO 647, and then we inject those antibody conjugated to the uh, periphery of the tissue, uh, most actually at the foot pad, and then at the foot pad, actually in the downside of the here. And then this antibody conjugate was drained through the lymphatic vessel. And they arrived in the popular lymph node, and then it labeled through this FRC, uh, fibroblast reticular cell. And then we can obtain uh, this two hour uh, timeless imaging. Then you can see this T cell and B cell on the extra vegetate from this vessel, from, uh, from inside the vessel to the outside uh, of the vessel to the lymph node parenchyma. And then you can uh, identify the you know, certain hotspot, so-called hotspot, for the extravagation of a T cell and B cell. And then you can also, on the also if you can see, look at it carefully, you can see this T cell and B cell share this hotspot for the extravagations. So this, you know, cell trafficking of a certain type of cell, in this case it's a T cell and B cell, you can easily uh, image it by using intravital microscopy techniques. Okay, so this is uh, another example of a tumor microcirculation imaging. So in this particular example, we use a uh, dorsal skin point chamber that holds the uh, cancer genome uh, uh, cancer cell in the subcutaneous tissue and explain it more detail later. Uh, but in this particular example, uh, what we are looking at here in the middle is uh, in green 
each batch red blood cell, you know, flying, flowing inside the vessel. Uh, and the red one is actually the vessel and the cellular cell. Again, it's labeled by uh, anti-CD31 antibody conjugate with uh, red flow 4 and then that was intravenously injected. And then this antibody conjugate in a circulate the full body and then systemically labeled the uh, endocellular cell. So you can you know, clearly visualize the uh, vessel. Uh, and at the same time, we draw out the uh, small volume of the blood and then label the red blood cell and then inject, uh, intravenously inject it back to the, this mouse motor. So then thereby, you can see this probe of the red blood cell and then thereby you can see the microcirculation inside the this tumor model. Uh, and actually this blue color is a pseudo color of the uh, tumor cell, cancer cell, it's LIC, recent lung carcinoma cell line, express green process protein. So actually the, the real color of this cell is green, but then we just uh, change it to the blue uh, to show you the, this red blood cell more clearly. So you can clearly see the this flow of the red blood cell, and then you can see this you know change of the vessel, you know the enlarged vessel, and then uh, it became curly as you can see in the middle. Uh, and then on the this side, on this left side, you can see this one you know particular vessel is actually compressed by the uh, neighboring cancer cell, and the blood flow is much more slow. So this is a you know, very typical you know, phenomena happening in, inside the tumor. They're you know, proliferating, you know, actively proliferating cancer cell, you know, compress the vessel like this, and thereby you know, hinder, you know, disturb, you know, slow down the blood circulation. And then eventually this vessel will regress at the later time point. So you know, this kind of a very fast you know, dynamic phenomena can be directly, you know, imaged by huge intravenous microscopy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was kind of a short video, and then this is a more long-term video. So in this example, the same preparations and the same technique. Uh, what we did was we inject, uh, we build, we make a uh, breast cancer, you know, general model using MDA MB two thirty one GFP cell. So we inject this tumor cell in the weight you know, more uh, about two to three weeks until this tumor grows. And then we inject, intravenously inject the nanoparticle in red color and then see how this, you know, nanoparticle is delivered through the uh, tumor vessel and then eventually to the uh, cancer cell over uh, 24 hours. So the advantage, the advantage of using this skin uh, dosal imaging chamber is we can image the same microscopy site over a very long time. So in this case, it's 24 hours. So let me remove the uh, green color. So now you can see more clearly. So you can see this blue uh, vessel. Again, CD31 antibody conjugate, uh, antibody, uh, antibody conjugate, you know, labeled endocellular cell. And then you can see this red color. So you can see the increase of this nanoparticle. And then it's arrival, you know, to the blood vessel at six hours, as you can see here, inside the vessel. And then at 24 hours, you can see the, you know, uh, diffusion, you know, more, you know, diffusion of this nanoparticle from inside of the vessel to the outside of the vessel and then uh, to the tumor cells. And then you can see that, you know, some of the tumor cells, you know, accumulate the nanoparticle more, like, uh, like that you showing it here. So, uh, Intravital microscopy, you know, can be a good tool, uh, you know, good technique if you want to image the uh, delivery of the some, you know, drugs or, you know, other materials over, you know, extended period of time. In this case, it's 24 hours. Uh, okay, and then this is another uh, example uh, published in JCI in 2015. So in this case, what we did was the image the uh, small intestine and mesentery in a live mouse model. So more specifically, we extolize the small part of the small intestine and then make a small incision, expose the lumen, and then image the uh, absorption of the, this uh, lead uh, pro, uh, fluorescent you know, periaxis. So in the middle, uh, actually we use the transient mouse model, the PROX1 GFP mouse model. So in this mouse, uh, the GFP is expressed in the lymphatic endocellular cell. 
So in the small intestine, the lactia, the lymphatic, uh, lymphatic vessel inside the uh, villi express GFP. So you can see this lactia inside the uh, single villi. And then later, you know, at the mesentery, so this is the image obtained at the mesentery, you can see this green color, that's the mesentery uh, lymphatic vessel. And then when we apply this periaxial on the luminal side of the small intestine, you can see, this is actually single uh, intestinal villi. You can see the delivery of a red fluorescent fatty acid to the enterocyte, the epithelial cell of the villi, and then uh, diffusion of this fatty acid to the lamina propria, and then, you know, uh, build up, you know, drain through the, its uh, green color, you know, uh, lymphatic vessel. And then from here, from the villi, it eventually, you know, transported through the mesentery. So as you can see, at 90 minutes, after the application of the fatty acid on the luminous side, you can see this clear, you know, the peak transport of this fatty acid from the villi through the mesentery lymphatic vessel. So this is the, you know, another, you know, good example to show we can, you know, track the, you know, uh, flow and absorption and transport of the uh, biological molecules uh, inside the uh, live animal model over time. Well, we can do it a little bit more faster. Yeah. So this is the uh, liver imaging, real-time liver imaging. So on the left-hand side, what you are looking at is we start the recording in the liver, and then we do the intermission injection through the uh, blood vessel. And then you can see within, you know, you first show up the, you know, the fill up the, you know, uh, liver sinusoid vessel. And then within, you know, two to three minutes, uh, this profile, you know, is, uh, was uh, get out from the blood vessel and they accumulated in the hepatocyte. And then again, so this is a very fast phenomena within just uh, uh, four minutes. And then on the left hand side, you can see the clearance of this uh, present tagged molecule over six hours. So you can see the you know, slow you know, decrease of this process tagged material from the uh, liver. And, uh, and then on that, so up to here, so I showed you like, uh, you know, intravital lineage of a live animal model for, from, you know, several minutes to several hours. So that's the you know typical time from time frame we can image the uh, one mouse model in a single imaging sessions. But the good thing of intravital microscopy, the mouse is alive, the animal is alive during the intravital imaging, and then we can save the mouse. So this imaging can be survival uh, experiment. So in other words, we can you know recover the mouse after the imaging, and then we can image the same mouse again. And that, and then this is the one of those kind of, you know, survival, repeated, uh, intervital imaging of the brain. So this is the same, uh, microscopic site inside the brain. So as you can see, uh, you can see this, uh, blood vessel pattern. So this is actually same site. And then we image the same brain site at, from day zero, day three, and day five. Uh, and then, as you may know, the brain vessel has a uh, uh, blood brain barrier, BBB. And then you can see at day three, this small molecular weight, uh, dextra is actually leaked out from the blood vessel at day three. So you can see this red color, uh, red dextra is leaked out, uh, from the blood vessel. But the, this large molecular weight, two million Dalton, uh, dextra does not leak out. So at day three, you can, you know, clearly see this uh, uh, BBB function is compromised for the small molecular weight, uh, small, you know, mole uh, small molecular weight uh, dextran, the 3,000 darkens. But at day five, again, this BBB function was recovered, restored. So this transient, you know, BBB dysfunction happened at day three was restored at day five. Okay. So day zero, and day five and day three, you can see the liquidity only at day three. And then, you know, we can image the same mouse actually even longer. So this is a continuous 24 hours, you know, intravital imaging of the single uh, blood vessel in the uh, brain. 
So in this particular example, what you're looking at is blue color is endocellular cell, okay? Uh, labeled by the uh, antibody CD31 antibody conjugate. And then we image the uh, pericyte, it, uh, it's a huge ng 2 ds maybe. So you can see this red color uh, pericyte, you know, extend its uh, process. So here, along the uh, blood vessel and the cellular cell. So this is the, you know, recovery of the uh, pericyte to vessel coverage. So uh, from day 3.5 to 4.5. Okay, so in here, from day three to day five, this is the you know key you know several level event. The pericyte vessel coverage is restored as you shown in here over twenty four hours, and then this uh PBB dysfunction is restored from day three to day five. So you can see the physiological change like uh, uh, blood vessel uh, vascular leakage. And then you can also see the several level changes at the same time, at the same uh, time period, uh, as you shown in here. Uh, and then this is the preparation for the skin imaging. So in case of skin imaging, it's relatively easy. Actually. So we, we just then assign the animal model and then prefer the, some, uh, some device to place the skin against the uh, cover glass. And then we just then, you know, simply take the uh, images using the microscope. So this is my example. So in this case, uh, we use a light MGP mouse model. So you, what you are looking at here is mostly macrophage and neutrophil. And then again, blood vessel is labeled by uh, anti-CD31 antibody conjugate. And then uh, this is one of the work published in JCB in 2017. So in here, uh, what we did was we inject one of the protein, the KRS, labeled with the Pro4. You, and then this protein, this percent protein was intradermally injected by using micro injector into the dermis. And then we can see the response of the neutrophil after the injection of this protein. So you can clearly see at six hours after this injection, three hours and six, six hours after this injection, you can see this huge, you know, recruitment, uh, recruitment of, uh, uh, of this, uh, you know, green, uh, neutrophil and macrophage toward this KNS protein. And then also we can image the, you know, hair follicle as well. So this is another in vivo imaging data we obtained at the, uh, Ear skin. So, if you, I don't know whether you are familiar with the skin hair follicle. So, in the hair follicle, so you can see the dermal papilla. So, this green color is actually nuclei of the cell. So you can see this hair is here. Then you can see this red color is actually sebaceous gland. And then you can see this is dermal papilla. And then this is the, uh, this area. So, this is the, uh, hair schematics of the uh, hair follicle, and then you can take the you know, similar image in the live mouse model. Okay, so, so I, I showed, you know, many, you know, example data. So, uh, simply say, the intraductal microscopy can enable uh, dynamic 3D imaging of various several level dynamics. Like this, such as, you know, cell trafficking, you know, movement of the cell, and the cell to cell interactions, as you can see here, and then also cell to, you know, microenvironment interaction inside their live preclinical animal model in vivo. And then again, and then also for the drug development, the intravita micro can enable a direct imaging analysis of drug delivery, so as you shown in here in the middle, to the target tissue and cell. Uh, and then this is the real-time video of the nanoparticle flowing in the blood vessel uh, in the liver after the intravenous injection of this nanoparticle. On the left-hand side, this is the uh, delivery of the adaptively transported T-cell to the, this green cancer cell. So drug delivery and also drug efficacy can be you know, directly imaged and analyzed by using intravital microscopy in a live clinical animal model. So our intravital microscopy has been applied to many 
many different uh, internal organ, like uh, brain, well, bone marrow, you know, brain tumors, well, also like you know, skin, hair pollutant in the skin, and then some tumor model. Uh, actually, this is a colon cancer tumor model. And pancreas, spleen, stomach, small intestine, colon, adiposity tissue, prostate, and placenta in a pregnant mouse, lymph node, memory tissue, uh, kidney, muscle, liver, heart, lung, all these, you know, different organs can be, you know, imaged by using uh, intermittent microscopy in a live animal model. So I think technology is providing two photo microscope and also compocal microscope model and then dual mode model as well. So, and then the another one advantage is it's all in a you know, single box package for easy installation. So once it's closed, so once you set up the animal model and then install it, you can, you know, everything can be uh, easily, you know, manipulated by the, using the uh, joystick here and then uh, PC UIs. And then this system is, you know, very much co-optimized, uh, has co-optimized hardware and software for intravital imaging. So it has uh, several features like uh, uh, ultra fast real time imaging speed with four first color, simultaneous four color imaging. And then it has also, you know, live tissue motion compensation functions. So you can, you know, easily, you know, mitigate the tissue motion during the imaging. And then it integrates other approaches and device for live animal maintenance, such as uh, temperature heaters, uh, body temperature uh, maintenance system. And then we also have you know, many other accessories and apparatuses for the various you know, internal organ things. So, well, I don't want to go too much detail, but the, you know, so we use a rotating polygon meter. That's one of the unique you know, laser scanner. And then by using this scanner, we can image very, uh, we can achieve very high speed, you know, imaging, like uh, 100 frames per second at 512 by 512 pixels. It's, uh, you know, and then once we have this in a very fast imaging speed, we can image the, you know, moving tissue in the live animal model. So as you can imagine, this internal organ always moves around, you know, you can, you cannot, you know, simply, you know, fix the internal organ easily and then make it not make it not move. So this is a very typical you know, tissue motion when you when you do the intervital microscopy. So what you need is you need active frame by frame you know, motion compensation functions. Like this. Okay. So we just uh, you know move you know shift the individual frame uh, individual frames and then thereby stabilize the uh, motions by compensating it. So this motion compensation is uh, critical to obtain this high quality, you know, intravital imaging from the moving tissue inside the uh, live mouse model. Even if the mouse is anesthetized, still the mouse, you know, have to breathe air and the heart is beating. So there is always, you know, microscopic scale, you know, movement in the live tissue. So this is another example. So this is actually the uh, image of the, uh, the real-time movie obtained from the kidney. So as you can see, well, it always moves like this. So you definitely need the motion compensation functions. So in our microscope, we just automated this motion compensation functions. And it can deal with you know, various different you know, movements of the uh, tissues. So in this case, you, know, you can see this focus you know, you know, moves up and down. Because you know, because of the breathing. So let me play again. So this is the real, you know, video uh, obtained from the our software. So what we do is we just need to, you know, select the which color to stabilize, it. and then you just uh, capture, and then you know it automatically compensates the movement, and then eventually you get this uh, motion compensated images. Then we also have, you know, feedback control, you know, temperature, body temperature monitoring system, and then a heater system to keep the body temperature to be stable uh, during the imaging once it's anesthetized. And then we have, uh, you know, this uh, sliding system to load up the uh, anesthetized mouse model. So this is the, you know, self-text device. 
uh, for the brain imaging, for example. So we have, you know, uh, you know, detachable, you know, plate holder, the heated plate holder. So you can use, you know, various, uh, uh, different uh, accessories and apparatus optimized for the different, uh, organ imaging. Uh, so, and then we also, you know, can, you can use two photon microscope and then you can also use compact microscope model as well for, uh, intervital imaging. So, uh, the, but the advantage of the two-photon microscope is it has you no know, more imaging depths in the live tissue. But the compact, but the, you know, it has you know relatively, you know, it has relatively because it has only one wavelength, it has relatively you know limited multicolor imaging capability compared to that. Compact microscope has more efficient and the multicolor uh, imaging capability, although the imaging depth is a little bit limited than the two-photon microscope. So we normally, you know, recommend to you to have, you know, both of the imaging mode in your microscope for optimized, you know, and then, you know, versatile, you know, intervital microscope imaging. So actually, this is a real, you know, uh, in vivo image obtained from the live mouse model. So this is the image obtained from the uh, lymph node. So maybe I don't need to explain the principle of the compact microscope. But anyway, so compact microscope can, you know, obtain, you know, JSTAG images in the, uh, live tissues. So this is the, uh, data obtained from the inguinal adiposite tissue. And as you can see, this is the four micrometer interval JSTAG image obtained from the live and the mouse model. And then later we can build up the, this 3D rendered model. And then you can see the sub several level pictures. Uh, if you look at carefully, you can see this, you know, bulge of the, you know, micro vesicle from the adipose site. And then, okay, and then again, you can image uh, the same mouse over time. Like uh, this is a you know, repeated image of the liver, uh, but, uh, of a known and correlate uh, petty liver disease mouse model, you know, from day two, day seven, day 14, and uh, day 21. This is all 3D images obtained from the mouse model in the liver in vivo. And then two photon microscopy is another technique. You know, in this case, we use in you know, a femtosecond pulse laser at the near infrared wavelengths. And then, you know, by doing that, we can get the, you know, uh, more penetration into the biological tissue and then get the, uh, section DVD. And then another picture of a two photon microscope is it has, you know, additional imaging mode, like uh, multi-amory generation imaging mode. So, uh, it's different from the process, but it can be combined with the process imaging mode. And the good thing about this harmonic generation imaging, uh, for example, second harmonic generation imaging, can visualize, can detect, you know, collagen or other protein fiber or microtubule or other, you know, uh, other, you know, molecular structure without labeling. So let me show you one example. So, you know, the good example of a second amount generation imaging is uh, collagen. So, this is the image obtained from the uh, live mouse model in the liver fibrosis model. So, you can see this green color is actually collagen fiber inside the liver. And then the red color is the repeated droplet. Uh, it's a fluorescence imaging. So, it's a fluorescence and red color. And the second amount generation in green color, uh, dual mode imaging obtained from the live mouse liver by using two photon microscope. So again, so this is the real data. The GSTAC, you know, motion compensated images. So actually every single image is motion compensated. In the in the real uh real time you know high speed images, actually the liver is continuously moved around. But then we compensate each motion and then take up this GSTAC uh, images in the live mouse model. And then on the left hand side, this is the maximum intensity projection images. So we just overlay all individual you know, GSTAC images. So, you know, this two photon microscope can be a very useful tool to monitor the progression of the uh, fibrosis in the live mouse model. So in this example, so no, compared to normal liver, you can clearly see the you know, deposition of increased collagen deposition in the liver of this, uh, uh, Liver fibrosis mouse model. And then, of course, 
because we can have G-stack images, we can have, you know, this, you can just think of this 3D uh, structure inside the liver. And this is, you know, why the area mosaic image obtained from the uh, a muscle of the uh, Psi-1 YFP mouse model. So in this mouse model, so let me zoom in to this area. So again, this is the dual mode imaging. So second image generation and presence imaging. So in blue color, you are looking at the blood vessel and the cell cell. And in red color, but you are looking at this, in this, you can see this periodic pattern. That's the uh, sarcomere inside the myocyte in the side muscle. Uh, and the green color, that's actually the peripheral nerve uh, in, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, side muscle. So, and then in maximum intensity projection imaging, you can clearly see this neuromuscular junction, the nerve ending in the uh, side muscles. Uh, and then we recently, you know, uh, introduce this very small all in a two photo microscopy system. So it fully integrated with the compact, you know, 10 percent laser system inside it. And then it can be, you know, completely, you know, block the uh, imaging area with the temperature control uh, device. And the size is quite small. This main box, main, you know, single box is very small sized. And then also we have, uh, you know, visualization software. Uh, to deal with the uh, data, multicolor, you know, 3D data we obtained by using our microscope. This is the rendered data, and this is a 4D, you know, rendered data. So, multi uh, time maps, just tag image can be, you know, visualized like this. So, of course, you know, you can rotate it if you want to, and then see the, you know, movement of the individual cell uh, in these tissues. So, yeah, this kind of uh, all, you know, high quality, you know, intervital imaging can be obtained by using the intervital microscope from the uh, IBM technologies. And then, you know, there are many imaging window techniques available, developed by the uh, researchers, like the Dosan Skinhole Chamber for subcutaneous, you know, cancer drug imaging model, and the cranial imaging window for the long-term repetitive brain imaging and abdominal imaging window model for the long-term, you know, abdominal organ imaging, like uh, liver, pancreas, and kidneys. And then we have our own, you know, export support system uh, package to train you how to, you know, use this uh, uh, chamber uh, devices. So this is the YouTube video we uploaded in our uh, channel, YouTube channel. So this is how you can, you know, do the surgical procedure through the dosage skin point chamber. And then with this chamber after the surgery, you know, you can obtain, you, know, you can do this several level images from the uh, cancer genome of the mouse model. So later you can see it in the uh, full version in the YouTube videos. And then the good thing about this uh, uh, dosage skin point chamber is we can image the tumor gro cancer growth and then also, you know, cancer vessel changes over time. So this is one example, day 7, day 10, and day 13. This is the same microscopic site inside the dosal skin bone chamber. So in green color, you can see the uh, GFP expression cancer cell. And then in red color, you can see the change of the vessel morphology uh, together with this uh, cancer cell growth from day 7 to day 13. So from day 10 to day 13, you can see this dramatic, you know, dilation, the increase of the diameter of the blood vessel, uh, like this. And then, uh, well, also you can, you can do the same thing with the treatment and then without treatment. So on the, and below, you can, what we did was we did some anti-engineering treatment. So you can see this vessel remodeling is very much suppressed. But without treatment, you can see this huge, you know, change, huge, you know, cancer vessel remodeling in just the six days with uh, this cancer cell growth. And then, yeah, I already explained to you, in the same technique, we can monitor the uh, drug delivery to the you know, individual cancer cell through the blood vessel. And then this is the uh, long imaging device I explained to you already. 
So this is the, another YouTube video for training and then for education purposes. So we incubate the mouse model and then we make a uh, surgical some procedure to expose the lung and then use our you know civilization uh, window device and then we can obtain this uh, uh, microscope scan several level you know imaging from the uh, lung of the mouse model. So I explained to you here and then we can because you know our system is a real time imaging system like a 30 frame from 30 frame second. 200 frames a second, we can see, we can visualize the individual, you know, IBC flow inside the best, uh, inside the lung. And then we can, you know, use the same device. You can use that same device. We can also use other, you know, stabilization window device for the heart imaging as well. So actually this was, you know, heart, uh, imaging, real time imaging, a real time video obtained from the heart. The heart is already beating. So we, you, we use the same principle to stabilize the uh, motion of the heart in a very small area. And then even after the stabilization, we still have this huge you know, motion artifact. So we definitely need motion compensation functions to observe the you know, single cell uh, movement inside the heart. And then for the brain, the cranial imaging window is very standard technique. So this is, again, this is an education video we uploaded in our YouTube channel. So we remove the small portion, small part of the skull, and then put the glass, and then use UV uh, epoxy to seal the area. And then in this setting, we can image the uh, several individual cell inside the brain cortex, like this. So in this particular example, we image the uh, astrocyte and pericyte, pericyte in red color and astrocyte in green color, and the endocellular cell in blue colors. So this is actually the projection images. So you can see this is the arterial, this red vessel. And then this large vessel is actually vein. And then you can see the individual uh, astrocyte and the pericyte. So this is in a higher magnification gist tag images. So you can see the blue, you know, endocellular cell, red pericyte, and then green, you know, astrocyte. And then this is the projection images, maximum intensity projection images. And then, well, this setting is very stable. So you can see, you can see like the you know, individual cell doesn't change. And then you can see the no, you know, damage in the brain over in you know, a 30 days like this. Uh, okay. So I think I'm running out of time. So I like to just quickly, you know, show the some data of we obtained from the brain by using this cranial imaging window model. So what we made was we, by using those banga, we can make a small, very small thrombus in the one penetrating arterial. So we can make a very small micro impaction in the brain, like this. And then we can check, we can observe the uh, impacted area over, you know, 30 days by using the uh, cranial uh, imaging window. So you can see the, you know, this expansion of the tissue. Basically, it's edema and then it's recovery. And then, you know, uh, you know, tumor cell, you know, shrinkage, actually, it's actually, it's basically in a localized cortical atrophy. So this is change over time, over 30 days. So you can track the, you know, change of the tissue and change of the cell in the brain. You know, we, more than a month, actually. We stopped that month, but it can be extended even more, like uh, three months to six months. And then by using the uh, second generation imaging, we can monitor this scar formation in the cortex on the uh, right hand side here. So this is the data. So at day 13, you can see the increase of the collagen deposition after this micro impaction induction in the brain. Like this. And then we can see it in a 3D you know, structure uh, by using the uh, section images. So you can see you know, this uh, collagen, the second generation image of the collagen actually surrounding the impacted area. And then at the several level, from day zero to from day zero to day two, we can see the disappearance of the uh, astrocyte like this. So again, this is 24 hours movie. So you can see the disappearance of the, this green dot, green you know cells, basically you know disappearance of the astrocyte. And then also change of the pericyte from day zero to day eleven. 
So this is same vessel. This vessel here, 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 here. So same microcapillary, you know, capillary in the cortex can be tracked up to 11 days after the induction of the microimpaction. So you can see the, so in normal condition, the blood vessel in the brain is covered by the pericyte like this. And then after the impactions, you can see the shrinkage, you know, shrinkage of this uh, uh, pericyte process like this, and then it's recovery at day five. So this is the process recovery. And then it correlates with the uh, BBB dysfunction, the transient BBB dysfunction with edema and then uh, pericyte and the astrocyte loss and the pericyte best coverage uh, reductions. And then it's recovery at day five. So all these several level changes and physiological change can be, you know, you know, imaged in and then analyzed by using intravital microscopy technique with the uh, imaging window technique as well. Okay, I just showed uh, just a few examples, several examples. But uh, if you have a, you know, difficulty, and then, you know, some, if you have uh, some, you know, hesitations, uh, yeah, this is a little bit out of the story, but uh, you can ask us for the help for the imaging service before you make a decision. So this is one exemplary project we did. So we basically you know, image the uh, delivery of the exosome in the uh, sepsis mouse model, and then reported it to the, uh, these authors. And they was published in 2020s. Okay, so we have you know full lineup of the intravital microscopy, two-photon microscopy, compocal microscopy, and dual mode two-photon compocal microscopy system. All this mouse uh, microscope system is optimized for the live animal intravital imaging. And then we also provide the you know, test imaging service as well. So if you have any interest, please visit the website of IBM Technology. It's www.ibimtech.com. And also, if you have any questions, please send us an email to information at ibintech.com. Uh, okay, thank you very much. So if you have any questions, uh, I can answer you now. Uh, so first of all, I can see one question in the uh, Q&A box. So it's a question from Ralph. Uh, so can you explain a little more about how the motion compensation works? Is it computational image registration or is the stage microscope moving with the animal? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's computational image registration. At this moment, yeah. So if it's necessary, uh, if we reach necessary, so this XY, you know, we, we have, you know, three dimensional, you know, motion changes in x, y directions here in the same plane and also g direction motions. So if this x, y, you know, motion, you know, changes, it's a little bit difficult to track it because, you know, it may change the, you, know, you, you have to, you know, move the animal itself. But the g axis, you know, movement can be tracked, can be, you know, compensated by moving the, you know, objective lens physically by using the, uh, Piezo uh, stages, if necessary. But the, the today's example, all of the our motion compensation data was uh, done was and achieved by computational image registrations. And so, when you when you are doing the the motion compensation, you are compensating an x, y, and z. Uh, yes, basically we compensate x, y, and then in g directions. Uh, in this case, we just you know. Remove the you know off axis you know the off focus out of focus images. Okay, so in theory, if you had I don't know, say like a thirty micron stack, mm -hmm. and then there were some that were out of focus on the Z, mm -hmm. like the subtraction, you may end up getting like a twenty or a twenty five micron stack instead. Oh uh, no, it's not like that. So uh, so let me let me show you. So for example. So in this case, if you look at it carefully, it's not just X, Y motions. We, we have, you know, G axis motion as well, right? The out of focus images. So what we did was we just removed the uh, out of focus images 
and then we you know select the you know x y you know shifted uh, frames and then you know computationally you know registrated registrated it so it's all you know one single plane images so in case of you know uh, motion compensated g spec images what we did was we you know, we just do the same thing. We take uh, you know, G-stack images at each depth, but at each depth, we have a 3D motions, right? Mm -hmm. But in this 3D motion, we just select the, you know, those specific depth images and then compensate it. And then we go into the deeper area and then do the same thing. We you know, just select the same focal area images and then do the registrations. Uh, okay, so then there's another question is, do you develop any clinical imaging system as well? Or are all the systems designed for preclinical studies? Okay, for now, all this system is designed, developed for the preclinical studies. So actually, we have our own internal you know, development program for clinical imaging system, but it's not you know, ready for sales yet. But to, you know, uh, but another thing we can say is if you, if we want to, if we, so for now, if our system is more specifically designed for the, uh, small animal model, like, uh, mostly rodent model, mouse and rat. But uh, we have other customization option for larger animals. So in, for the larger animals, what it did was we, you know, removed the, this, uh, uh, small part of the box was removed. And then we make uh, you know additional uh, imaging arm for the uh, large animal imagings like uh, uh, mini pig or a parrot or you know rabbit can be you know imaged with customization as well. And then you know in principle that system can be translated for the clinical imaging system as well at a later time point. Uh, okay, let me move on to next question. So from Ya Chi. Okay, so you showed many amazing videos. Among them, what are the examples that can be achieved by the IBM MS model with the PIX920 nanometer wavelengths? Uh, yeah. Actually, this example. <laughs> this example is the image by using single 920 nanometer wavelengths. So we Obtain the you know, second image generation and the fluorescence image together with the single wavelength images. And then we have rather, and then this data. In here, uh, actually, this is also, you know, single wavelengths. Uh, what? No, not the only. This is a dual mode image mode. But, uh, you know, with the 920 nanometer wavelengths, I can tell you we can do second image generation imaging and then we can image the GFP. And then we can image the uh, TD tomato or the SLA. It is all at the same time with a single 920 nanometer wavelength. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry. So I to the time limitation. I uh, okay. I didn't include it here, but I okay. here. Yeah, this is the example. This is the example of the GFP and uh, uh, DSLED and second image generation imaging, all obtained by using one single 920 nanometer wavelength. Yeah, like this. Okay, so let me move on. Let me move on to the next question. So from Mark, is it possible to perform radio ablation, laser cutting? with our two-photon system. Uh, well, uh, yeah, with customization, it's possible. But uh, for laser ablation, uh, we need a higher you know, laser power, actually. We typically use, you know, relatively small power, uh, relatively you know, lower power model for the laser ablations. We need uh, you know, higher power budgets. But the, well, it can be doable. Okay, so like if you wanted to, because I've done intravital imaging in the past, where you know if you do a very 
short high dose of um yeah normally you yeah, can, normally you, can the, you know like kill a cell and then <laughs> like as the other cells like migrate in around it oh uh, yeah well that that's possible yeah but we need uh, for, for that purpose uh uh we need uh, you know different model of laser actually <laughs> we need a higher power model for in this case we, this laser power this laser model can deliver up to you know a uh, couple of hundred milliwatt so that may not be enough to uh, well that's possible uh, okay so let me rephrase it so we, we need to so we need we need a customization but uh, uh, it's possible it's possible to do, uh, to build up the ablation and the laser cutting function as well. So then, how many? So what is what is I guess like the capacity? So you can have at least four confocal channels and a mm -hmm. two photon. Can you mm -hmm. can you go up to six lasers? So if somebody had you know a rainbow mouse and wants to look at YFP and CFP, is it possible to put six uh -huh. lasers? Uh, for the uh, well, let me tell you. So for combo core system, uh, so this is two photon system. So it has four detector inside. And in case of a dual mode microscope, the combo core and two photon microscope mode, we have four detector for combo core and four detector for two photon. So inside the microscope, we actually have eight detectors inside. But in case of compocore detectors, yeah, actually we can, the standard model is four, but we can, you know, increase it up to you know, six if it's necessary. And then the, the, um, like, I, I think I've seen like you guys have like isofluorine machines mm -hmm. and everything is kind of integrated together. Yes. I think yeah. that's one thing when you close the box and you can't mm -hmm. see the mouse anymore and you need to know yeah. that the mouse is in fact still alive and breathing. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so. it's it's designed like that. So, so in this model, we have you know this tube adapter here. If you look at carefully here, so this tube can be used for isofluorine, you know, delivery to the mouse model. And then, is it also possible? So, if, if people wanted to image tissue, or mm -hmm. if they have like thick, thick, like full surface thickness sections. Is no, it to be able to modify, yes. like, so yeah. we can look at that using T-Photon as well? Oh, yeah, of course. So we have uh, the standard, you know, slide glass holder as well. Right. Yeah, so this is kind of a system in which, you know, it has multiple, I mean, the intravital imaging, obviously, is, you know, a huge advantage, but thinking about the flexibility of putting something in a core facility, it's really nice that you'd be able to use this for other to photon mm -hmm. applications as well. Yeah, sure, of course. So, you know, all, you know, glass, you know, no, no, the, the, the slide glass tissue, well, all of that can be imaged, of course, you know. If you can do in vivo, you can do all other, you know, in vitro and ex vivo image as well. Yeah, that's great. All right. Um, thank you so much um, for sharing today and hopefully. Um, if people have questions, they can either reach out to you directly. Um, if other people, if anyone is interested in this technology, so um, kind of the goal of bringing this in is not only to to kind of increase the exposure to what is what's available technology wise, but also as we think about what um, the cellular imaging histology core wants to write shared instrumentation grants for in the future. Um, this is kind of something that we really want. Um, your feedback. So if you think your lab um, or if you're a trainee and you're like, but my experiments would be so cool if I could do this and perhaps your PI is not on the call today, um, Alex will send out a link uh, for the video so you can send it to them. But also, that Luke and I know, um, you really need to get kind of a critical mass of people together that are interested in using the technology to be able to put in for one of these grants. Um, and I think, you know, that, that this approach, you know, would be really helpful. And I think it, it makes it, I hope you all get the impression that it makes it a lot more accessible. Um, because like I said, when you're trying to set up two photon, especially intravital experiments, right, like trying to figure out how do you do the surgery to get a lung? How do you keep a lung in one place? How do you correct for the artifact of breathing? 
Um, so somebody who studies the gut, like we know peristalsis is a huge thing and it's really annoying and hard to, to be able to do it. But I think a lot of the caveats um, have really been kind of solved uh, with this system and it makes it a lot easier. And the fact that also you guys kind of sell all the windows and everything so you don't have to go kind of source everything piecemeal. Um, it's a huge advantage to have kind of a one-stop shop resource for doing this. And it would really come down to you do you have the right mice to do this? And can you learn the surgery? And a lot of the other stuff, you know, we can kind of, with the expertise, obviously, that you guys have, it's a lot easier to, to plug and play than opposed to us getting, you know, a two-photon from somewhere else. And then we have to figure out how do you rig to be able to do the brain imaging and how do you rig it to do heart imaging? Um, so this is the reason I'm really excited about this. I see someone has their hand up. Don't want to go over too much. I can't. Um, do you, do you have a question? Can you put it in the Q and A? Maybe. Is there anything else I missed that you guys wanted to? I just wanted to thank you, uh, Dr. Kim, Karen, and Alex uh, for organizing this and the audience, uh, of course. And please feel free to reach out to us, uh, info at Cintica.com, if you had inquiries about the system and accessories or you had any question about how the different components work. We'll be happy to help you with all your questions. Thank you. Ahead, I was just going to say thank you for a beautiful presentation. I love this is awesome. <laughs> totally. All right. Thank you all okay. so much. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Okay.